NFL Week 7, we're going over props and parlays. Welcome, everybody, to Winning in the Shadows. Andy, Jim, and Corbin, we're going to break down all of the plays. Uh, we got some great things to recap from last week while we're doing this. Go ahead and hit the like button and leave a comment. Tell me your best bet. And then, uh, Corbin, we get to do – stop me stop me for the code word of the week to put <laughs> wood, break. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Make, and master, all. Stop. Master? Yeah, we'll go. Oh, that's going to be a good one. That's a great one. All right. <laughs> master is your code word. If you don't have a hot take and you want to help the algorithm out, just type the word master in the comments section. Uh, shout out. Um, a couple a couple great things to recap from last week. So Corbin and Jim had a, a head-to-head bet. Corbin lost it. So Corbin has to do Jim's sack prop, <laughs> sack prop segment. Passed so off my got... workload for the week. It's all Corbin. <laughs> yeah, Jim um, can just draw a cup. I've spent the last like seven hours just trying to prepare for this. <laughs> yeah. Um, we got a couple of bet tickets that actually bet our Kirk Cousins parlay. This single single best same game parlay we've ever come mm. up with. Oh, easy. Over one and a half rush attempts and <laughs> under half a yard. Uh, so we hit that one. Thank you for setting that bet slip in. Uh, one of my favorite bets that we've done uh, for this year. Uh, I don't know if we will have another one this week, but that was great. And uh, to send in the bet slip was fantastic. Uh, and then um, we had somebody uh, <laughs> we had somebody upset with us because there were two plays that that uh, that didn't go over well. Even though we go over every category in every game, we are talking about a hundred props. Uh, somebody yeah. on social media was like, "Well, these two plays didn't go well," and one of them was Romeo Dobbs, your boy Corbin. Uh, oh. <laughs> Well, yeah, as, as I was saying to you, he literally he, he still didn't have a good game. He he literally had like what was it, thirty or forty yards, and he he caught two touchdowns, but mm-hmm. they were simple. I mean, he didn't have to do an awful lot, and some suddenly I'm getting hey, and it's like <laughs> it's like he still did awful. Yeah, uh, a couple of great comments from the comment section. One, someone said that someone on the video is cute. Didn't specify which one of us. It's definitely Andy. It's definitely Andy. I'll take it. Uh, and then I don't someone think I said, "Come off as cute." It's got to be Andy. And, 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 then, <laughs> and, and then someone said something about Corbin's accent, completely forgetting that, according to Corbin, we're the ones that have the accent. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this is so, true. All right, let's get into it, guys. Passing props. Um, I'm gonna go first. Uh, I, I, because I, this this is crazy to me. That you can get Drake May at plus two fifty to throw two mm-hmm. touch, t- two touchdown passes against the worst secondary in the league right now. The Jaguars have allowed thirteen touchdown passes in the last four weeks. All those quarterbacks have gone over. I was worried last week about Caleb Williams, so I didn't play him, and I was like, "Well, rookie quarterback going overseas." No, torched him. Uh, plus two fifty on any quarterback to throw two touchdown passes against uh, the Jaguars is. Crazy to me. Absolutely crazy. And uh, his over-under is half a touchdown at minus 245. That's a parlay piece, in my opinion. So uh, that's what I got for uh, passing props. Corbin, you like anything in this? I don't. I'm going to pass in this game, quite honestly. Okay. Um, Weather report looks like it's getting a lot better for this game, by the way. Um, Winds and rain looked like it was in the forecast, but it looks like it's going to be before the game. So not too much worry for the weather in this one. Jim, do you like any passing props? I'm with you on the Drake May, man. Uh, that's First of all, that number is ridiculous for, for two touchdowns. I don't care how bad the quarterback is. Like it's, it, I think he's – is that worse than Spencer Rattler's number was <laughs> Thursday? I think it is. It's a better I number. I think so. Um, so that's just madness to say that Spencer Rattler had a better shot – then Drake may um, they're going to let the kid throw, man. They got to see what he's made of. And he showed us last week. He's not afraid to let it fly. Moving on to I, the, I could, I could be tempted by Trevor Lawrence to throw an interception. He, he still just doesn't look right. Other than that one week, I, I liked him to go over. He just, something just doesn't seem right with the Jags quite honestly, all over the ball. So yeah, if I had to lean that minus minus one thirty five sounds somewhat interesting. Mm. Uh, let's take a look at the Lions and the Vikings. What are the marquee games of the week? Corbin, you like any of these quarterbacks? See, I, it, this game to me is like initially there's quite a lot that I liked, but all the numbers uh, in this game to me are exactly in the right place. I can't, I can't find any value on the Lions Vikings at all. I think Donald's going to have a good game, 
But recently, in the last couple of games I've watched, he's had a really good first quarter or first half, and the second half he's kind of fallen away. I just, again, I the numbers are all kind of in some the right place for me in that game completely. So I agree. I can't find any value on passing props, Jim. I'd be interested in the touchdowns. If we if we go to touchdown props, look, Aaron Rodgers threw for two against the Vikings. It just they light up the scoreboard, the the Lions. Um, yeah, you would think of them as a running team, but it's like run, 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 and then huge passing play. You know, and it, 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 it's always Montgomery and Gibbs, just like we said last week, and they did go off. But God, I just I, I, to me, this is this a track meet. This this has the recipe for a track meet, doesn't it? It yeah. absolutely does. Um, no Aiden Hutchinson now pressuring Sam. Like I feel like we say that most week with the Lions, is it has that kind yeah, of potential. Of course, yeah, they, so. they, they, they've had theirs. We had a Sam Laporta. I mean, showing, but, uh, uh, plus one hundred for Jarrett <laughs> and and minus one twenty five for Sam. I don't see the Vikings running it down the Lions' throats. They have a fantastic D line, even without Hutchinson. Great run defense. Um, yeah, give me both guys to throw over one and a half. I'm not looking to add a hundred bets, but I think they're both playable numbers. Uh, let's take a look at the Titans and the Bills. Josh Allen at 214, Will Levis at 178. It's kind of correlated here. Corbin, this might be a, a same game parlay looking at, at the Bills allowing 5.3 yards per carry. They still can't stop the run. If you're Tennessee, that's your path to victory. No, no Ty J Spears, which means I like Will Levis to go under and I like Tony Pollard to go over when we get to the rushing props. Exactly. Like maybe taking an alt on Levis you know, to go under and an alt on Pollard to go over. Maybe might maybe that's the same game parlay. No opinion yeah, I, on Allen, but what do you think? Uh, exactly as you said. Uh, I was looking at, I didn't quite make an alt parlay in the end. There wasn't enough that I liked, but I love those plays where, so you like Levis at 178, but it, it's somewhat of a low total still. If you could bump that up to the 200, 210 range and get an alt under on that, that sounds pretty promising to me. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take it under, yeah, two thirty and a half or a two hundred five, and find yeah, a even that. Piece yeah, to it. I, I quite like that. So, uh, Jim, what are your thoughts on this uh, game? Anything? I think as long as Will Levis is starting, you just keep playing him to throw an interception. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's he's yeah, kind of that quarterback this year, player. right? Like, yeah, he is. He's that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's gonna have way more interceptions than touchdowns. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that that's the only way I would look. You know, with Josh, it's uh, it's going to be contingent on J on James Cook, in my opinion. I think we saw that very evidently against the Jets that the passing props without James Cook, they are not going to go to the running backs as much as they do with James Cook. Yeah. Let's take a look at the Bengals and the Browns. Corbin, do you have the onions to take an over on Deshaun Watson against the Bengals, who have looked really, really awful at times in the secondary, or still a pass? If Amari Cooper was still there, I could probably talk myself into just about playing it. With Cooper not there, I, it's it's I just stay away from me. Uh, we mentioned it before. Nick Chubb back this week. Much prefer his prop. Think they're going to ride him a little bit. I just don't want anything to do with him, quite honestly. Deshaun Watson, so. Yeah, me neither. Jim? No. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. There's there's a way I want to play this game we'll get to in another prop. Dolphins at Colts. I mean, here, here you go. Here's your classic two quarterbacks under 200 yards. I, I can't bring myself to bet on either one of these guys. I feel like there's much better opportunities to bet on this week's card. Um, I would take an under on Richardson, uh, but that's about it. Jimmy, like either of these quarterbacks, or this is stay Jimmy, away. One ugly game, ugly <laughs> game. It's just see, with, with Richardson coming back in the lineup, we don't know what we're going to see. I mean, we know what we're going to see, but we don't know what we're going to see. Um, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's not going to be Flacco. We know that much. So yeah, these numbers, you have no idea. And the other thing with Richardson, I don't even want to bring this up to put Andy in a bad mood or anything, but you never know when this guy's going to get dinged up again. You just don't. <laughs> Exactly. It would help us with betting prop. It's so much. Oh, I would love Flacco to come back in. I think the Colts are better without yeah. him, uh, with with Flacco and Richardson. I, the betting props are over are, mm -hmm. are better um, without him. So I I I, I loved him when, when we drafted him, and now I've I've completely soured on him. Mm -hmm. um, just because you're, you. you're watching Flacco just completely play outplay him. Yeah. 
right now. So no, you're not hurting my feelings. <laughs> Interesting. I, I quite like I quite like Tyler Huntley over his total this week. I oh, think God. they're gonna I think I think they're gonna have to throw the ball. The Dolphins running backs are just not getting it done and can't stay healthy at the minute. He has so many weapons with Hill and uh Waddle, we'll get to that because I like them as well. And the Colts are just so bad versus the pass. I, I, he got 194 last week versus the Patriots in a win. I think, I think this sets up quite nicely for Huntley to at least go over this total. Not necessarily have a good game, but at least go over. Was it 183 or 183 like and a half? Not exactly. a big number at all. It's so. a good point. It's Tyree Kill on turf too. Yeah, in a dome. against our secondary. I, I, exactly. <laughs> not, a, exactly. Not a bad angle there, Corbin. Yeah. Uh, Texans at the Packers. Corbin, thoughts on uh, your Packers quarterbacks here? Uh, both kind of in the right place again. Haven't. Re- I, I have a few plays on uh, the rushing props, but I. It's kind of hard. I don't. I don't want to take the Stroud number at that high with uh, Nico Collins being out. Sure. And then uh, Love will get to that. I expect us to run the ball more this week to try and control time of possession and all of that stuff. So we'll get to that later. Um, Jordan Love has hit this in every game that he's uh, that he started this year, this one and a half touchdowns. I know it's minus 185, but streaks are streaks when you're hitting this prop time in and, you know, game in and game out uh, warrants. You can easily put that with a team total or alt spread or – Oh, one yeah. of the other alts that we mentioned just to bring it down a smidge just because it's 185 on the board doesn't mean you have to directly uh directly play it as that as well so um eagles and giants here's another one where at this buddy jim i i just take both of them to throw over one and a half touchdown passes and i think one of them does it maybe we get lucky i think the last time we i think the last time we talked about this both of them hit you were sitting there with great plus money i yeah one of them certainly going over. These secondaries are not very good, um, and at these prices, I I can't really uh, ignore it. What are your thoughts? Yeah, this Eagles team. This is a you know division game. Eagles are just getting by. Giants have a little bit of momentum behind them, not even based off results, but just the fact that Daniel Jones has been running a competent offense. Uh, so people are starting to spin and get a little high on them. I worry with the Giants when this. If this comes crashing back down to earth, now we're facing a divisional opponent who knows the offense, knows how to counteract it. I'm not a fan of this Philly defense. I most certainly could see both of them going over their touchdown total. I don't see a threatening running game. The only thing I would say what hurts is it's just this could end up being the Barkley show. And I think that's what everybody wants it to be. So I would lean more towards on Jones's overs than I would Hertz's overs just because we we could see them give Barkley 26, 27 touches in this game. Then he just murders the Giants. The Jones play is actually one of my favorite on the board. Uh, I've got a same game parlay piece coming up on that. What is the t- – I can't quite read it. Is it 207? Seven. Yeah, 207 and a half for really, Jones. And it's two, really two, two, interesting. Two. I don't know. You guys won't have noticed. but uh, So I did my notes for this last night, and it was actually at 217. And I still liked the over at that point. Obviously, that's a 10-yard jump in the wrong direction, but I like it even more. The Eagles, 24 versus the pass, average of 237. He's gone over this in three of his last four, and Neighbors is back. I'm expecting them to be behind. I'm expecting him to be throwing the ball. Such a low total that I I quite like that over on Jones. So. Seahawks and the Falcons. Um, Kirk Cousins didn't have a huge day throwing the ball, only 19 completions for 225 yards. Uh, but that was because they were able to run the ball a ton against Carolina. Uh, Jim, I think the Seahawks defense is ripe to be picked on. We've seen that. They're just so banged up. Like the, the, the defense that you're seeing from Seattle is not yeah. their, their normal defense. So we got to take advantage. I would take Kirk Cousins over 265 and a half. What do you think? Um, I'm actually interested in the run game in this more than the passing game. I think that defense is so beat up that the Falcons could go back to playing bully ball and just really tire out that they have no depth. They have no depth. Their 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 backup players are backups, backups, backups. So I mean, there's really not a lot of depth on this D line. The linebackers are not good. I could see the Falcons putting the running game shoes on and just going. So 266, I can't get there. Um, could he go over? Of course, it's Kirk Cousins. Um, I like Gino to turn it over. You, it, that's a, it's a, it's been a good one. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, in shootouts. He's good for a wayward, mm-hmm. you know, pass. It's only minus one twenty five. So yeah. the thing is, if they're down, he's going to throw it up to Metcalf. 
and it's either going to be a big play or it's going to get picked off. You've brought up taking this bet live. Yes. If the situation, talk us real quick, talk us through the live bet on players to throw an interception. So if, if let's take this game for instance, instance, um, Seahawks get the ball first numbers minus minus one twenty five. as time clicks away in the game, the numbers get juicier and juicier and juicier. Uh, you might be sitting around plus one twenty five in the second quarter in the third quarter. If it hasn't happened yet, you could be at plus 200 to get it. So, I mean, looking back at a lot of these interceptions, if they don't throw one early, you have a chance to get on it. And if your team is down, you could get the Hail Mary interception. You could get the end of the game, just throw it up there interception, the end of the half Hail Mary interception. So it's not hard to get a better number. The problem is, is if it happens early, you're done. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah it was, so it's yeah. like you lay off or you wait, but you will get a better number as time ticks away in the game. They, with the interceptions, it's all relative to time left. Uh, Panthers and Commanders, low totals here. These are two awful secondaries, Corbin. They're both at 237 and a half. How, I mean, come on. How do you end up with Dalton and Daniels at exactly the same amount? I, I, I guess you, I, I guess the way that I'm looking at it is I think the Commanders are going to be straight ahead and Daniels isn't going to be needing to throw the ball at all. And obviously that means Dalton's going to be having to throw it constantly. That's, that's how you end up at that kind of level playing field because of the, the mm -hmm. game script. I can't get there with either of them just because Daniel's of the blowout, huge blowout potential. And just, I, I'm still not convinced by Dalton in the slices, especially at this total. So uh, Raiders. What's, and what's, uh, what's Andy's completions again this week? I feel like oh. th that's a gym special every week. Yeah. Finding out the Dalton. He went under last week, so the uh, Dalton complete twenty two and a half. Yeah, they're keeping it right at that number. I mean, if they're down in here with that Washington secondary, I yeah. like that one. All right, that could be a neat, that could be a good one to take live, as you said, Jim, because I expect them to start out the game running the ball. Yes, yes. If command, if if command, so obviously, obviously he's not on. He's probably not on track to reach his completions that early because they're running the ball so much. As time goes on, I imagine that the number's going to start creeping down and then if the game script is going in your favor you might be able to hop on a live lower number when he's going to just be throwing it probably the second half so uh aiden o'connell versus matthew stafford died oh, i mean if there's a game i want nothing to do with anywhere this is it yeah I, mm -hmm. any, no all right passing wise no i can go on the next i can go on the next game if yep. uh so I quite like Purdy over 31 and a half pass attempts. So he's only gone over in two spots this year, but I think these, both these teams could have issues running the ball. Quite honestly, they both have quite good rush defenses. There is that shootout potential. I don't quite know how this game's going to go. That's probably the game script is keeping me off actually betting it, but I know that at worst Mahomes is going to keep this close. I think it's going to be a tight game and 31 and a half is really not a lot of pass attempts in the game that could have shootout potential. So I quite like I, that. I like it. Uh, Jimmy, like any passing props? Uh, Purdy's passing touchdowns over one and a half. Right. That's an old faithful. That's another yeah. old faithful. Yep. <laughs> uh, we might yeah, as well just get a banner and just hold that up every time. Right. Right. <laughs> 49 this section. We should have a scroll <laughs> on the bottom with just our repeat. That's the thing with props, man. When you find one and you can get on a roll, you exactly. want to get on that roll. Yeah. Um, yeah, no real, no real opinions. I got it. Uh, well, I, I would just tell you the chiefs just take the under in the second half. They're mm -hmm. back to playing great defense in the second half and their offense is clunky Mahomes. I have you seen that people are dropping Patrick Mahomes in fantasy leagues. That's how wow. awful he's been. Yeah. Like, like he's been terrible. They're not putting up points. So, um, I had an, I had a nice alt total in the second half last week. I'm just going to be doing that every week. When halftime rolls around the Chiefs game, I'm just looking at the, the unders. So, uh, Jets and the Steelers, Aaron Rodgers, Jim. Oh, I'm going to get ridiculed for this one. Not oh, by yeah. you, by the public. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, over one and a half touchdown passes. Ooh, whoa, okay. I believe. Oh, I like this. Line? Plus 105. Yep. Plus money on that. It. Uh, when they get down to the red, like Corbin, I think, brought this up last week. Whatever the Jets are doing, when they get in the red zone, they abandon it. <laughs> yes. They go the opposite way themselves. every time. <laughs> yeah, so they ran the ball great last game. They got in the red zone, and they threw it. 
<laughs> every time. Yeah. Which is part of our problem. Look, with Devontae coming in, I'm not saying that he's going to get 120 something yards receiving, but I see this being, and the Steelers defense, I don't think is very susceptible to the run. I don't see Brees Hall having a fantastic day. I think the Jets could be down. This is a tough defense. You have two outside weapons that are true number ones. I think Rodgers lets it fly. Like again, it, it's now or never for this team. If they're gonna yes. light it up, they're gonna do it now. So give me Rodgers at plus money to throw two touchdowns, and I don't have to worry about my Jets blowing the game. It's <laughs> a great point. I find I find it very interesting in this game that the Russell Wilson prop is currently off the board. I, again, I wrote these notes last night. He was at one seventy seven and a half, and even then, I I liked the under on that. He's he's old. He hasn't played all year against the second best pass defense. Like I'm expecting the Steelers to run the ball. I don't see how Russell Wilson has any kind of good day in the slightest. I think he's just going to hand the ball off and struggle. Quite honestly, so. Aaron, Aaron Rodgers' uh, pass attempts is another one that I've been riding the last few weeks. Again, we mentioned uh, last week that uh, Hall did a way better job, but they had such issues running the ball. So Rodgers has just been taking it into his own hands and just slinging it constantly. So, Just wanted to take a quick second to tell you guys about uh, the special that we've been running all week, and it's still available for everybody if you want to buy all of 2025. You can get that. It's already discounted down to $17.99, but we're going to give you the rest of 2024 for free. If you are interested in long term, which that's what we highly recommend, the price per day is way less. And you get a big, big sample size of what our plays are like. And our plays have just been absolutely fantastic uh, this year. Uh, we do a full transparency recap every Monday and uh, on last Monday. Our totals are 458 wins, 297 losses for plus 147.85 units. That's an 8.5% ROI. So the return on investment is absolutely fantastic. We don't run a whole lot of specials on long-term packages like that. So when we do, I always like to bring it up. Um, it's just too important to to to, to invest long-term as opposed to just trying to get daily packages and even weekly packages. Uh, packages but just because the price of the day is so different. So if you're interested in treating your bankroll like a business, if you're interested in investing in long-term, take advantage of that deal. The sooner you get it, the sooner you start getting the rewards and getting the plays. This includes all 5% plays. So if you wait till next week to try and, and get this, you're going to miss out on six days that we will have thrown in for free for this. So encourage everyone to take advantage of that. There's no promo code needed. You just need to go to my profile page, wt.buzz slash al. We can help you get that bankroll started. We can build a small bankroll into a bigger one. We were plus 91 units last year, plus 148 units this year. So we've shown long-term success, short-term success. Take advantage of that. WT.buzz slash ALWagerTalk.com. Rushing props here. And we will start with the London game. Jim, do you like any of these guys? I dislike see Trevor. These guys, I dislike all of them. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Trevor Lawrence at thirteen and a half seems a little bit low um, against this Patriots defense. I could see him getting a scramble or two. It's going to be uh, nothing. I'm going to put my money on as far as that though. Stevenson returning. Jags are vulnerable through the air, not on the ground. So no interest for me. Corbin, not in this game. No. All right. What uh, what's the rush receiving for Ramon Jerry? We're, we, we'll have to talk about rush receiving now. Uh, sixty and a half. That I can get behind. Okay. If cool. if, if we get a couple check down passes, I mean, you don't know what's going to happen with um, with Drake May, but you know, we had saw how much of a part of the passing game he was. I I can get behind the sixty and a half. No official play though. All right, uh, did Lions and the Vikings, Corbin, you like these guys? This, the Lions, this is what you guys went head-to-head -head with. They Double both, or nothing, Corbin? They both Double were, or nothing? <laughs> well, it's the thing. They were both good, and that's yeah. just what Oh, sure, let's go for is. it. <laughs> no, I think you play fun. them both again. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, if they're going to keep putting these guys at 50, I think the worse you go is one and one. Like, yeah. And I know it's not a winning proposition, but um, I did a sneaky play on this last week as I took both of them for 40. So we're talking about a same game parlay or anything. You take both for 40. You can take both for 50 here. Um, I, I just think 50 yards is so low for these two running backs. They both can go over every week easily. 
<laughs> I think I think that was my same game parlay I gave on the show last week, wasn't it? Was yep. it Gibbs forty, Montgomery twenty five, and like Lions plus seven and a half or something? Yeah, Sounds, yeah, you did yeah. do that. Yeah, I took them both at forty as well. Yeah, so no, both, yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Um, yeah, no opinion on on this one, but you guys are right, and maybe this is a good same game parlay as well, Corbin. I, I wouldn't be mad going right back to something like that. Yeah. Vikings very good defense though. That's the only thing. Um, so, but the lions, they just seem to turn it into a shootout Titans of the Buffalo bills. I'll go first. Love the Sony Pollard 66 and a half. No mm-hmm. Tajay Spears bills team that they don't give up a ton of carries, but their yards per carry is just it's 5.3. The only team worse than that is the saints. And that's after the dismantle that they, you know, them getting absolutely crushed. Um, so I, you know, this is Pollard, 17 for 93 against the Colts, 22 for 88 against Miami the last couple weeks. You, you're in a bad spot if you're depending on Will, Lev- Will Levis to win you games, so why not give it to the running back? I would, this is really, really strong play, uh, in my opinion. I think he goes over his carries, and I think he goes over his yards. Corbin, any thoughts? Uh, I'm on James Cook this week. I don't know. Jim will probably – say rushing and receiving i'm going to stick with just just the rushing for the minute so he's over in three of the five weeks and the only two weeks he didn't was the uh huge l to the ravens obviously good rush defense not going to run the ball in that game script and then the uh, game against the jags where they had a big win i think i think this tyson team is way easier to run on than to throw on and i think cook would i i think the bills always feel like they're best when they get cook involved it, it shows when he's not there but uh, again, I'm like, I kind of, I kind of like the rushing and receiving more, just because we've we've seen it so many times, Andy. You know, we talked about it last year. Whenever they we expect them to run the ball, they just start throwing the ball, and every time we expect them to throw the ball, they start running the ball. So they've been better this year. They've been better. I didn't say they were great. But they've yeah. been better <laughs> they, because it's been a little more worse. predictable, and they're, they 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 certainly commit to the run more. Um. Jim, do what's you, it? you you like the over the... rushing and receiving? Yeah, if it's if it's below eighty or around eighty, I'm in on uh, James Cook pretty much every week. Eighty-four and a half. They're teasing you. It, they're, they're creeping it up a little bit higher. It was eighty-three a couple weeks ago. I got it at seventy-nine at one point, seventy-nine and a half. So it's it's borderline. It's it's a good number for it, but uh, as far as minus one ten, but you're, eh. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I don't know. I think you could lose that one. All right. Uh, let's move on to the Bengals and the Browns. Corbin, you talk about Nick Chubb, 39 and a half yards. You like him? Think he yeah, I, I, workload? I have two plays that I like in this uh, segment, actually. Chubb, uh, I'm going to play it, quite honestly. What is it? Fir- 39 and a half, such a low total. None of the other running backs in that team are getting it done. I love these players coming back off a comeback spot. He's going to be so motivated. He's going to be so eager for this game. All it takes, like... We forget Chubb could easily break a long one constantly. He does it most games, or he did last year, obviously, uh, not last year, the year before. I think he's going to have no issues coming back from this injury. I think he's very ready for it. And at this total, I, I think it's a good matchup as well. I think it all leads to Chubb having a good game. The other one I'm looking at is Chase Brown, over 50 and a half. He had a uh, 53 versus the Giants last week, 46 against the Ravens. I already mentioned they have a great rush defense. And he got 80 versus the Panthers, 62 versus the Commanders. So he's easily going over this total. Browns uh, ranked 24th against the rush, giving up an average of 141. And they're 7th against the pass, which, again, leads, I always talk about it, but game scripts and the easiest path to victory just seems to run the ball. So uh, Moss is on the downward spiral. So I think it's all Chase Brown and Nick Chubb this week for me in this game. Jim? I got to agree with Corbin. I think Chubb does go over this. Like uh, Normally, I wouldn't be jumping for joy to, to bet on a returning. Like, look, you know what the Browns want to do? They want to take the ball out of Deshaun Watson's Get rid of Deshaun, Watson's rid of Deshaun. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Forget that that ever happened. <laughs> the owner has already said that we can't get rid of him, so you're right. playing him. Um, right. I still... I still stand by that, that the only reason he's on the field is his contract and Jameis Winston should be the starting quarterback at this point. Um, They want to take it out of his hands. If Chubb gets 10 carries, he doesn't need to do much with the 10 carries to get to this 39. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, Jerome Ford pulled hamstring. The Bengals have given up the fifth most most rushing yards uh, in the league. So, and I don't think they're rushing Chubb back. 
by any means. This isn't a rushed deal. They have been very patient and just kind of see how he is every week. I think they've picked this team on week out. I think this is an it's ideal a home spot. game, division game. Exactly. It totally exactly. makes sense. Yes. It's a perfect spot for him to come flying back, quite honestly. Dolphins in the Colts. Uh, I'm taking Trey Sermon under. Uh, here's my analysis. He stinks. <laughs> 1.6 yards per carry last week. And the eye test, it was worse uh, because he oh, had wow. an 11. He had, he had one 11-yard play. Other than that, he had 17 carries for 18 yards against wow. Tennessee. Those Before that, numbers. against Jacksonville, a horrible defense. He had 10 carries for 38 yards. He's not He's not the guy. Uh, Goodson is should get more work in this one. So um, A-Chain should have a field day. I don't know what his health is like, but I, I probably would just stick with – Sermon under. I, I just I don't think he's even going to get that. Many. I mean, how much how 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 much more do you need to see from him to know he's not your guy to be running it into the back of the offensive lineman's backside and falling down? So um, yeah, Trey Sermon. And that is Andy's application to become coach of the Colts. That's not coach. I'm running back. I can, <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> I can I can have one point six yards per carry on eighteen attempts. Anyway, uh Corbin, you like any of these guys? No, no, I don't like rushing Jim? props here. No, no, I'm out on this game rushing wise. Texans no, and Packers, no, Corbin, you mentioned rushing props. What do you like? Oh, I have three that I can oh, get behind okay. in this game. Three. I I'm gonna I'm gonna start with my least confident and work my way up. So um Mixon over sixty four and a half, I think I have it. Drop so down to sixty two and a half. Oh. So you're getting a little little discount here. Love it. So the two games he start and finish, he has 159, 102. I will say, so obviously I got the Packers rush defense wrong last week, but there's there's context to it in my right. eyes. The Marvin Harrison injury completely ruins their pass. Yep attack it was literally all we had to do was just plonk everyone in the box and just wait for connor and um i've forgotten his name now connor and murray to to run it was easy it was easy to stop them i think we're going to go right back to having issues especially all it takes is stroud to open up the field a couple of times and we're going to be back to running around like headless chickens quite honestly um Nico Collins is hurt that does hurt the passing game could lead to mix and getting a few more carries than uh if he was playing, my only concern is I could see a shootout in this game between these teams. So uh, that would hurt Mixon. Uh, my second favorite is CJ Stroud over nine and a half. I, I really like these games where Stroud is in a competitive game or a shootout. Um, he's gone over in four of six. And the one time he didn't was uh, one of the games he didn't was a huge uh, blowout win where he just he didn't need to run. He got I think it was seven last week against the Patriots, if I remember. Nine and a half is so low. He can get this on a couple of carries quite easily against our defense. And then I think my favorite is uh, Josh Jacobs over 15 and a half rush attempts. So he's had 18 and 19 the last two weeks. Texans have a good pass defense. I think the Fleur is going to uh, control the clock, try and run. Keep, keep his offense on the field. We're at home. I just think everything leads to Jacobs just getting a lot of carries to try and give our defense a break. If it if it turns into a shootout, I think I think we're going to need to do something to control the game. So I think Jacobs will be it. So they're my free favorite. I don't know if any of you share my enjoyment. I trust you with the pa honestly. Yeah. I trust you with the Packers like games. Like I, I I've I've said this so many times. Like. When you have somebody that follows a certain team, they just know more than than everybody else. I, I don't need to, I don't need to have my own thoughts. I mean, I you know, mm -hmm. I think I think there are points galore uh, in this one, so I, I think this sets up for a really nice fantasy game. So, um, yeah. Eagles and the Giants, Corbin. I know you got your same game parlay coming up in that one. Uh, yeah. Jim, you like any of these guys? Well, it's really going to depend on game script, these numbers. And I think they're telling you that it's going to be the Saquon show. Now, this Giants defense, I think, has played better than what was expected. It hasn't been fantastic by any means, but I think they've really shown an ability to be a competent defense. So they're going to be amped up to stop Saquon. Uh, look, look, we do this every week with every game. What is going to be the most popular pick? as far as bets this game. Oh, it's, it's going to be that one. Saquon to score a touchdown. <laughs> Saquon first touchdown score. 
Yeah. And it's going to be Saquon over rushing. Those are your top three. Everybody's going to bet it. So if everyone's going to bet it, either the books are going to get ransacked or the public is going to be sitting here dumbfounding when Jalen Hurts runs it in from the one. Uh, <laughs> so I may be betting. I may be betting I, as I well. I may be betting that one. <laughs> He's not going to get every touchdown to Saquon. No. So I, I this Daniel Jones total at 28 and a half, Look, this Eagles defense is not good. Don't let it fool you. When they go up against anybody who's hot on their certain day, the secondary is horrible. The linebackers are absolutely lost. We had a play on Nakobe Dean last week, and I watched that entire game and watched him run left, right, forward, back, and never into a ball carrier. He's just lost. So when your middle linebacker can't track down your running back, it's pretty pathetic. Uh, they have no pass rush. I could see Jones putting up some good numbers here on the ground. I could see him putting good numbers up through the air. We already said we like the two touchdown passes. Um, yeah, give me Daniel Jones over 28 and a half. I'll stay away from that Saquon number. Uh, Seahawks and the Falcons. I don't know what just happened. I'm going to have to look this up. But right before we started recording, Tyler Algiers' numbers was 38 and a half. Mm -hmm. And I was interested. Yep. And now it's 43 and a half. A five yard bump on a prop that's 38 and a half is mm -hmm. a gigantic red flag. Uh, maybe they're expecting him to do what he did last week, which is, you know, where they absolutely torched the, the Panthers 18 for 105. But I mean, before that, though, six for 12, eight for 60 against New Orleans, another horrible, you know, team seven for 32, nine for 53, three for 21. The move has absolutely terrified me, but it's the Seahawks defense that's so beat up. Um, not every Falcon is going to go over here, Jim. Yeah. So what are we doing here? I like Kirk Cousins. You like the running. I, this one's got me a little little confused. Quick, quickly, before we move on, I have an interesting question, Andy. So so when you see a prop jump that total, do you, yeah. do you like if you still liked it, would you go and bet it now at 43 and a half, or would you wait another hour to see if it slowly creeps back down? Like, how no. would you approach it? Well, I wait because five yards on a 38, that's over 10% increase. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, that's, that, that's, that's, that's a lot. That's two carries, probably. Like, like, you know, based on his average, he would need, I mean, that, that's just the, like they just added two carries to his workload. And for a guy that, you know, let's face it, is the second back on that team. Yeah. That's a lot. So that, I, I'm out. No, I'm not betting 43 and a half unless. There's some quote from the coach that was like, hey, we're celebrating Tyler Algier Day. Uh, <laughs> it's his birthday. I wonder Bijan if it's something Sick. on uh, <laughs> I wonder if it's something on the Seattle defense side. Well, yeah. A I mean, guy well, ruled out. They're so banged up. If they lose one more guy, I could see a move like that. Yeah, I, I'll I'll be patient and wait on the news. But once once you miss a line move like that, unless something crazy has happened, you're 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 out. You're done. Yeah, you don't want to well, go chasing lines, is kind of what. I was no. saying, if you liked it at 38 and a half and it moves, I, I'm more in the camp of you just lay off and you just, you, you yeah. don't go chasing it, betting it, even if it's moved. Yeah. So. Uh, well, that, that was my, that was my pick anyway. So <laughs> yeah, <I'm laughs> you, let's move on. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. That's where I was wild. going with it. I mean, that was literally in the last 45 minutes. So uh, we're recording this on Saturday afternoon. Uh, so if you're watching this uh, on Sunday, that's, uh, that's what's going on there. Panthers and Commanders, uh, Hubbard, keep banging the drum on Hubbard. He doesn't have any competition yet, but uh, Jonathan Brooks is still out. Miles Sanders was his competition last week. Miles Sanders had three carries for a very wow. confident one yard. One yard. Mm -hmm. He's worse than Trey Sermon. Um, <laughs> uh, and this is a Commanders defense that is not very good against the rush. Um, they, they're not great against the pass, but they're really not good against the rush. He's been good. What is I, is He's the third Leading running back this year. I I I wouldn't look. Surprise me. I wouldn't look at this. So, of the top three scoring fantasy running backs this year, only one of them was drafted in the top forty-three. That's wow. Derrick Henry. <laughs> so, Wowza. Jordan Mason and Chubb Hubbard. There's your other two that rounded mm -hmm. out the top three. So, um, I just keep going back to Hubbard. Like he's not barely going over this total. He's going over by like twenty-five and thirty yards. So that's why I will keep. Uh, playing him, uh, Corbin. Do you, do you like any of these these rushing? I, I, I oh, I was no. just gonna say, 
I, I, I forgot to mention this. We were talking about the passing yards for Daniels. They are over the moon that Brian Robinson is back. I don't know if you've read mm-hmm. the quotes, but Jane Daniels is like, mm-hmm. we're so glad to get Robinson back. That's a guy who I would target for a touchdown. Um, yes, he gets all the carries the at the goal line. I want to say that because mm-hmm. I his prop isn't out yet, but he should be good to go, well, and I would expect the big game. This might go hand in hand with what I'm about to say. I love Daniels <laughs> to go under his total this week. Love Rush, it, why, right? yeah. why do we need Daniels to run the ball against no, the Panthers? When they're they're going to be up, I don't know how many points I expect. He's gone uh, four of six. He's gone under this total. And if you remember, he went over the first game, and they, they reeled him back in, and they said – you can't be you can't be running that much. So, so really, he's like four of the last five. He's gone under this total. Mm-hmm. It's just there's no need for him to get to this total. It's not going to be competitive in the slightest, I don't think. And I think it, if there's any week to have an off week and just protect yourself, it it's this one to me. And this total is huge for a quarterback. Still, like this is like the Mar Jackson kind of territory. And I just I don't see the need for him to get anywhere near it. So yeah. Um, let's move to the Raiders and the Rams here, Jim. Alexander Madison and Kyron Williams, like any of these guys? Talk about two opposite ends of the scale there, huh? right? Yeah. Uh, this might, <laughs> I'm never confident in taking an over on 90 and a half, but if there is somebody that can get it, it's Kyron Williams. <laughs> the workload that this guy sees week to week, you know, the Rams are not back yet. They're not. I'm really curious, and this isn't a knock on Max Crosby, but Max Crosby's pissed off. As in, he don't want to freaking be there anymore. He flat out said this week, does anyone? I'm not here to rebuild. Tom I'm Brady to, does. I was, came here to win. <laughs> uh, I wonder how motivated or hey, – look, I don't fault anybody for making a business decision in that situation. So if your leader is just going to be kind of floating out there, not willing to stick his head in – the Raiders also lost Christian Wilkins, their best D tackle. I could see Williams having a day against the Raiders here. A big, big day. The 90 on the rushing is high, but I think he can get it. And again, Kyron Williams to score a touchdown. Yeah, absolutely. Against this team. Yeah, Tom Brady is the only player that's <laughs> interested in being a part of the Raiders. So um, so he can hire Bill. I <laughs> Seriously, how are you, how are you going to sign a ten year contract to be an announcer and then become an owner? Did you yeah. see that because now he's an owner, he's not allowed to interview players? Yeah, <laughs> like, he's not... <laughs> what he does whatever he wants, and everyone says okay. That's, that's ridiculous. It's <laughs> ridiculous. Ten year announcer contract. Oh, I'm going to be a part owner of a team. I will. I will say. Uh... I, I could quite happily throw a Kyron Williams alt total into any play. Yeah. So yeah. I will say I'm also uh, going to wait. It hasn't come out yet, but most rushing yards in the game for Will for Williams. <laughs> it's going to be minus uh, a thousand, ooh, Corbin. <laughs> it, you're going to be shocked. It normally isn't. So I I took Barkley last week, if you remember, mm-hmm. and he was his his total was in the like 86s, so not that far away from Williams. His next competition was in the. 30s or 40s and he was only minus 300 and he he had an awful game and i think he only got to like 40 yards and he still cashed the <laughs> most rushing yards in that game i was delighted so True. i was terrified for you i'm like oh my god he's gonna get it <laughs> of course he was. that's twice you've done that you you, you, yeah. you hit aaron jones in a game he pulled his hamstring or exactly whatever. I, I love i love those most that's rushing right. yards in a in a, that's in right a game. So. Uh, all right let's talk the chiefs and the 49ers here rushing props um, I have nothing uh, except for uh, Kareem Hunt over his attempts. I think uh, I don't think this 49ers rush defense is nearly as good as they've been in years past. The numbers would bear that out. And he's at 13 and a half. And Kareem Hunt is the guy. He's looked the best. Um, Cupboard's a little bare there <laughs> in the mm-hmm. backfield and with other weapons. So I think they ride Kareem Hunt. And second half, if the Chiefs are ahead, they're going to be running the ball. I think it's going to be really close. I don't see the Chiefs getting blown out. So, uh, Cream Hunt over 13 and a half, but that's about it for me. Uh, Jim, you like any rushing props? I was interested in Purdy over his total. I think it was what, 12, 15 14, and a half now. Right? So, so it was 14 and a half earlier. Now it went up a yard. Um, 15 and a half is getting. I know it's only one yard, but it does matter because of the kneel down at the end of the game, if it is possible. So the only thing with these two quarterbacks, you know, I would be interested in 
in Mahomes under his attempts, but at the kneel downs, that goes up. That's good for him. Uh, with Purdy, I'd be interested in the yards. If they're winning, that's going to go down by four or five yards or two kneel downs at the end of the game. So that's kept me off either one of them. Uh, no bet in the rushing for me here. Corbin? Uh, agreed. Just a All pass. Right. Jets and the Steelers. Uh, Jim, you like any of these rushing props? <laughs> um, <laughs> Not so we didn't see Braylon Allen get this big workload uh, with the uh, coordinator change. They were thinking that, well, maybe Brees is not going to be getting this big workload. He did, however, every time they got down to the goal line, Braylon Allen had a snap or two. So it looks to me like they're going to start using him as a short yardage goal line style back and try to keep the damage off of Brees Hall. Because of that reason, I think you have to look at Braylon Allen as an anytime touchdown player and not so much a yardage player. I think Brees is going to get a ton of targets. Now, whether that equates to lot, uh, to uh, um, yards, yeah. I don't know. What I worry about in this game is that they're so ineffective that even the 14 and a half carries, I believe it's at 14 and a half carries for uh, Brees, it seems low, but do they just have to get away from it and use him in the passing game? I, I don't really know what their plan is going to be. The only thing that I could really see was that, in fact, Braylon Allen will be a short yardage goal line back going forward. So I would not look at him in the passing game and yards. Uh, we could do the same uh, Kirk Cousins play here with, with Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> we very well could. I don't know well, if they're going to win. I don't think he's going over two and a half. I don't think he's looking to run at all. I think that ankle injury is worse than people – say that it is think that it is and there's a reason why they brought adams in because they want him to get rid of the ball as quick as possible see i worry that he doesn't get the kneel downs that was the that was the big thing about the cousins is like we know yeah. they're going to be ahead in the fourth mm -hmm. quarter um so uh i i as somebody that has Brees hall in his big money fantasy league watching him get them down to the four yard line and then watching braylon allen i know I it's just your heart sinks. It's like, oh great. Braylon Allen's gonna have four carries for seven yards and two touchdowns mm -hmm. and outscore Brees Hall on fantasy. I I was it was it was absolutely infuriating. So um yeah. Nothing nothing nothing, nothing for me in those no. except for Brees Hall over his rush attempts or you know, total touches, whatever the hell. So um all right, let's move to the receiving props. If I like Drake May, I guess I got to like uh, uh, DeMario Douglas here. Um, and I like his receptions at four and a half. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. I got, what, nine targets last week? So, I, like, if he's going to be throwing, you know, look at some of these other, like, reception totals for Patriots guys. Not a ton going on there. Hunter Henry's two and one. Polk's one and a half. So, yeah, I would I like Douglas over his receptions. Corbin, you like receiving props in this game? Absolutely not. Love not it, Jim. Me. Uh, no Ramondre Stevenson yet, so I'm going to wait to see when he pops up, and I'm going to be looking at his receptions. Lions and Vikings, Corbin, any of these? Again, I, like this whole game, just like there's bits that I like, but every prop kind of feels, a, I said it before, just feels like it's in the right number. I, I can't. I think St. Brown's going to have an awesome game. I think Justin Jefferson's going to have an awesome game. I just I can't get there with any of these numbers yeah. on anyone. So it's an half at minus 150s bonkers. Yeah. Jim, same? Uh, same thing. Uh, the, the pressure rate for the Vikings, I think Goff is going to have to get rid of the ball fast. Uh, even though that O-line is the best. It's not even a question anymore. Their O-line is the best in the league. It's still the pressure rate. You can be great as you can be, but if there's seven guys rushing and only six to block them, one guy's coming free. So I expect it to be a bit of the quick passing game. Now, I don't know who that favors. I was actually interested in your guys' take on this. Do you feel that if they go to a quick passing game, it's going to benefit St. Brown, or is it more so Jamison Williams? Does Sam Laporta get involved? I think it's Gibbs. You think it's Gibbs? Okay. I think it's Gibbs. Uh, the amount of times I've seen uh, mm -hmm. Goff check it down to Gibbs for a well, then that quick... that that three and a half receptions at plus one thirty five is staring me right in the face. Then, yeah, that doesn't seem like a lot. If that's what you're saying, the I, I would say the line that makes no sense is Sam Laporte at four and a half. Where do where, it seems high? 
high in one yeah. catch. Yeah. <laughs> the last that was for 52 yeah. yards, but Sam Laporta getting five catches. This one is like, do the books know something? I like, like mm. honestly, if I'm doing it, Laporta is going to be at like two and a half, maybe three and a half, but four and a half. He's going to catch five passes now. All of a sudden, I, I don't wow. know. They, I, he strikes me as a guy that Jim, you would, they would need him to help block. Like that's, they're going to have to check value out. is going to be. Yeah. I, I, I can't believe Laporte is going to get five catches. So, Andy, right. whilst we whilst we're on this game and we just mentioned Gibbs, could you look at his receiving total, not his receptions? The three and a half he's gone over. He went over the first two weeks, but his yards have been twenty one and a half. Uh, yeah. So he's gone over in four of the five games mm -hmm. by the looks of it. So yeah, if I'm going to play Gibbs, I'd prefer him on the yards than the three and a half receptions. Uh, Titans and the Bills. No, I, 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 want, I want nothing to do <laughs> no. with any of these. These uh, yeah. Barry Cooper. No, I, I don't know. Nothing. Nothing in passing. Jim. James Cook, fifteen and a half. He's got to be part of the passing game. He just does. Corbin, Corbin. You saw the difference. Just pass, pass, rush, props only. Bengals and Browns again. Nothing. I feel I'm I'm with you, Corbin. That these numbers just feel a little bit dialed in. Uh, I feel I feel like. <laughs> Be like Jerry Judy is like, ah, oh, no, no Cooper or Judy. Get it. No, I've, I've had Jerry Judy in fantasy. You're in a bad spot for depending on Jerry Judy. Um, so I was, I was really hoping that we would see a ridiculously known low number on David and Joko. Yeah. And they sniffed it out. Of course. Like they knew exactly where to go. Yeah. yeah. Corbin. No, no again, I, I'll take my two rushing props over trying to find that. I do like this next game, though. This, oh, this, go for these, it. These props might be my favorite. So Waddle over three and a half receptions and Tyreek Hill over four and a half. I'm going to do both of them together because they both go along the same idea pretty much. That They're just so low for these players. I mentioned before, I think Huntley's can have success this week. The Colts are not a hard team to throw on. Their secondary is awful. The, those two weapons are huge. Even on the short throws, like they can get them involved so quickly to go over these totals. Waddle has gone over this total in every single game this year. Still. Uh, wow. like, yeah, exactly. Tyreek Hill got uh, four receptions on uh, eight targets last week. Uh, sorry, sorry, Waddle got four receptions last week on eight targets, and Hill got six receptions on 10 targets so they're getting the targets i think i yeah i think i think both could quite easily go over this total i might even look to uh old ladder uh go higher than that for some plus money i i love both of those this week so jim no corbin nailed it oh i'm going josh downs under four and a half receptions with mm. richardson playing at quarterback the, the, richardson has completed nine 17 and 10 catches in three games that, that that's to the whole team mm -hmm. and he's going to get five to one guy. No chance. Uh, no chance. Josh Downs with Flacco seven, nine and eight. Let's just say there's a little bit of a drop off. And I, <laughs> I just I feel I feel like you're getting four and a half because he's of what he's done recently. Mm -hmm. Richardson is not hitting Josh Downs on precision <laughs> slants and out routes. Uh, no, it's Downs. Under receptions, I don't want to play yards because he could break one, but uh, I mean, <laughs> no way, no way. Uh, receiving props up next, you got the uh, Texans and the Packers. I, Corbin, I can't figure out your your guys's receivers. Just don't. There's no need. For, There's no need. Yeah, I, I can I can give you a way uh, a way that I'm going to play this game, and you guys will never have thought of it. I'm going to take Stefan Diggs to have more receiving yards than Romeo Dobbs this week it's <laughs> okay. minus 275 but i i'm gonna bring it back dob sucks these are his <laughs> you like, tell him like, corbin you pay, get him again <laughs> pay, listen here pay attention to these totals okay so dobbs has 49 39 18 62 and 50 yards okay memorize these numbers because Diggs is coming up next 77 82 69 and 94 and there's Love no nico collins like I know it's minus two ninety five, but we've mentioned a few other alt pieces. You just put it with one of those, and it and and you're great. I I love this play, so I I will be playing this. Love it. That's that's all you need in this in this game with the receivers. Let's go to Eagles and the Giants. I would lean ever so slightly to Devonta Smith just because uh, Goddard is out. Probably a couple more looks. It seems right up Smith's alley. I'm just not gonna 
I'm not going there. Uh, Jim, is this – I feel like Malik Neighbors is going to be a really popular play at the 72 and a half for good reason. For good reason. I wouldn't it, want to take an under. What do you think? It makes sense, but I kind of want to see him back to really – I'm not willing to jump right on him this first week back. I'm just oh, not. I am. Yeah. Uh, you're, well, I know Jim, he's going to get the volume. Yeah, you're just saying that because he said, I can't remember the play. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm just, sure the team I'm doctor not, was I'm like, not. Malik, could you just leave that out of the press conference, please? <laughs> Tell people you didn't black out, please. Your name is <laughs> yeah. so Corbin. We'll we'll wait for a same game. Play. Um, I, I, if anything, in this, I would say I like the Saquon uh, 15 and a half receiving. Okay, I will. That's I it. will say. Uh, I, I haven't got this in uh in my same game parlay. Well, I do. I have neighbors in some form, but I like his over six and a half receptions at his normal total. He's gone over in the last three that he's played with 12, 8, and 10. I think they're going to be behind or at worst level with the Eagles. The Eagles' secondary sucks. I, I love that he's coming back off an injury. I think he's going to get the exact same amount of workload. I think he's going to soar over this total. And again, he's another that I may look to oh, ladder up and play him mm. to have 8, 9, 10 receptions because I think they're going to need him. So, uh, Seahawks and the Falcons. Um, yeah, uh, not much here. I, I the the C- Seattle's. I mean, I, I don't know. Good luck figuring out those guys. Um, I think these numbers are dialed in, Jim. Mm-hmm. I think they're pretty much about what I expected. What do you think? With Seattle, you got to look at the past week and see which receiver did better. Matt Caffer, lock it, and then take the other guy the next week. <laughs> That's a good point. They, they are the constant flip flop, and if you get off of the 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 right timing, they are the most infuriating <laughs> passing game to bet on ever. Ever, 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 ever. So I, I have absolutely no interest in any passing props this game. I think I think Atlanta gets up early and pounds the, the crap out of Seattle's defense. Panthers and the Commanders. Again, oh, yeah, yeah. All right, no, we're moving on. Again. Moving yes. on. Raiders yeah. and Rams. Brock Bowers is going to be a very, very popular play for mm-hmm. good reason. I totally get it. That being said, I mean, how hard is this Raiders pass – defense to defend i i feel like bowers is going to be the guy you put a couple on i mean is trey tucker really terrifying the secondary like oh no we got a game plan for trey tucker uh corbin you taking any of these i'm not taking any of those i will wait i know we're recording this slightly early but i i'm waiting to see the number on madison's receptions he got five last week expecting them to have to throw the ball here particularly in the second half the raiders aren't going to be ahead so i'm going to wait and hope that that line comes out somewhere in the two and a half three and a half range and then i will look for an over on him so chiefs and the 49ers jim any of these guys Always tough to figure out. Always tough to figure out. Again, the Kyle Juszczyk number, I'll go back to it every week. Is it playable? Can it be gotten in one touch? He had a lot of touches, and he scored last week. It wasn't garbage time. It was the end of the game touchdown. I don't know what we're going to see. Do we Do we have any confirmation with Jordan Mason? Will play? How banged up he is? I, the I, fact that there's a number play. is telling me he's going to play. Okay, okay. Big, I got yeah, well, pretty solid assume, numbers. Yeah. We'll assume Jordan Mason's going to play. Um, look, we've seen George Kittle be really involved. That being said, this Chiefs defense, like you said, is turning it up in the second half. I would look to play it this way. Look at halftime at taking some unders. I think with this Chiefs defense, we have to start looking at numbers that get egregiously bet up. Like if we get, you know, Debo's got up to 89 and a half yards receiving after two big plays. Take the under for the second half. This defense does not give up points. They do the best job in the second half of the game. So I'm going to be looking just as a test to see what these numbers are at halftime, and maybe I'll get on some 49ers unders. Chiefs are good at making adjustments. I think that's the biggest Wait. thing. Mm-hmm. You see it every game. They they just find a way to take away your biggest threat or what's working for you. So. I would be interested, actually, in Kittle receptions. Uh, the Chiefs actually give up the most receptions to opposing tight ends. Um, I, I, I hate betting on Kittle, but, uh, of course, it's four and a half. No, that it's number's right too there, high. Yeah, they, yeah, they've got that one. All right, Jets and Steelers. Uh, uh, Jim, any receiving props you like? Oh, they don't have my boy up there. I was going to throw Jeremy Ruckert out there. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the wow. Jeremy Ruckert props. All right, that hit again last week. They keep lining him at one and a half receptions, and I know that Tyler Conklin's the guy. 
But when they try to run the ball and they have that package out there and double tight end, it is always, always, uh, uh, he's the check down. He's the check down. It's not Conklin. Conklin is running downfield. So if Rodgers is trying to get the ball away and they run a screen and they don't have it, it's going to Ruckert. Just a quick little dump off. So if I can see receptions with that, I think Garrett Wilson's going to have a day. Uh, if anywhere, it's going to be Garrett Wilson. Everybody and their mother is going to be on Devontae Adams overs, Devontae this, Devontae that. Garrett Wilson has been, take it from someone who's watched every play. The man has been double covered every single play. Like even if they're running the ball and he's at wide out, the safety just runs over and gets in Garrett's face. Like, yeah. They're not yeah. letting him do anything. And I think he's going to be wide open. Um, that's the only place that I'm going to look. Other than that, I'll be betting this game live. See, I, I was looking at Lazard uh, over uh, with, with the, uh, like, cause I'm thinking if anybody's going to be open, it's Lazard. Like he, they may just forget he's out there. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. <laughs> like, I, I we'll see when it happens. I, I think they're going to move Garrett in the slot and that's just going to afford so many more opportunities for one-on-one -on -one coverage. Uh, you could be a hundred percent right about Lazard is, you know, safety Wide goes open. with Devante. They Wide double cover open. him. He's running down the sidelines. Just he's one on one open. with a linebacker. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, well, right. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a gym, and I'm gonna say that my this this might be my favorite play on the board. Devonte Adams over four and a half receptions. It's not at draft wow. DraftKings just yet, but it's at okay. some of my other books. Four and a half receptions on Devonte Adams is a disgrace. And <laughs> he is right. He is it, right. It, it's it's a shocking number, quite honestly. I, I, I love this play. The injury, fake in my eyes. He, just <laughs> didn't, he, he, he didn't want to play, and I can't blame him. The Jets can't run the ball. Rogers, Rogers will want to prove a point, and I wouldn't be surprised if he gets this in the first quarter or the first half. He is going to throw to him. <laughs> Five catches constantly. in the first quarter? Uh, honestly, I, 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 I wouldn't it. be surprised if he threw it to him in back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back plays. <laughs> honestly, I would not be shocked in the slightest. And he is one, I've mentioned it before, but I will ladder him up because I think four and a half is such a low total. I'm going to go all the way to five, uh, six, seven, and eight. So I, I think that line's disrespectful. See, the, I, I don't mind the, the contrarian to me because he's going to receptions. Like, I, yeah. I agree the volume could be there. Whether he's going to break a big play or, or what, exactly. that's a whole other story. Um but yeah, I like the receptions thought on that, Corbin. Well, yeah. just uh, just to cement what you said, Corbin, about the hamstring injury, like the the gall of the Jets, they were like, "Yeah, Devonte Adams has been cleared," and then they had to add in no restrictions. They actually like put the, they actually just to really give an F. You could have just right wrote now. got the trade he wanted. Yeah, got, yeah. Uh, <laughs> hamstrings hundred percent got the trade. Good to go. Uh, all right, so all right, so last week, uh, Corbin. Lost a little bit. He has to do the sack props, but he's going to give you the same game parlay first uh, before you go to the sack props. So, Corbin, walk us through what you like about the same game parlay. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling really good about the same game parlays. I've, I've hit quite a few of them in the last week or two, and I hit the alt play last week. So this one is on the Eagles versus the Giants. It's uh, Daniel Jones to throw for 175-plus yards. He has cleared this in every single game. That is going to – remember those words because I'm going to say it about three times coming up here. Cleared it in every game. They're going to be playing from behind. Neighbors is back. Eagles suck versus the pass. I don't need to overcomplicate that. Then we have Neighbors, who again has cleared this in every, this total in every game he's played. Again, going to be behind. Again, going to be throwing the ball. 50 yards for him is nothing. And then Barkley to get just 40 yards. Again, has cleared this in every single game this year. Revenge spot. I don't need... Even the week that he struggled last week, he still got over 40 yards. I, To me, this feels great. All of this for only minus 130 seems like a steal to me. I love this one. Love it. Love it. We're going to get to Corbin's sack props. Hit the like button. Remember, leave a comment in the comment section. If you can't, code word today is master put that in the comment section love reading your comments and responding uh to everybody all right corbin it's, oh, your, sack, it, it's your sack department <laughs> oh, this jesus week. uh walk us through we just bask in victory here for a second. <laughs> oh god uh, i feel like i've done so much talk in this episode right so we're gonna go for uh giants over two and a half sacks I'm going to be honest, I, I've said it to the guys, I don't know every single defensive and offensive lineman on these teams. I'm going to be straight up with you. So I would take all of these with a pinch of salt, quite honestly. 
The Giants average 4.33 sacks a game, divisional game. This means a lot to this team. They know Hurts, they know his style, they know how he's going to play. And the Eagles give up on average 2.8 sacks a game. Hurts also has the uh, third longest time to throw throw the ball, which means he's holding the ball longer. It's about three seconds. It's the third uh, highest in the league. I think the Giants could quite easily get to two and a half sacks here. So that's the first one. My second one is uh, the Bengals versus Browns game to have over six and a half sacks. Again, not overcomplicating it here. The Browns average the uh, most against. Deshaun Watson's just holding the ball. He's a he's a mess. I don't need to go into the details. Uh, Browns uh, give up five about five sacks a game, and the Bengals two and a half. Again, Burrows is just holding the. They're both holding the ball too long. Quite honestly, I think both uh, defenses could get in there for a sack, particularly as I expect Watson to be from behind. He's just going to stand in the pocket looking for Amari Cooper, who's not even on the field. So, <laughs> and then and then my third, this is probably my favorite play, is uh, uh, the Panthers under two and a half sacks versus the Commanders. Uh, the Panthers average just one a game. I'm expecting them to be playing from behind, so I'm expecting the Commanders to be up. Daniels doesn't need to just stand there and wait to get hit. Like he'll just throw the ball away or just hand it off. There's no, there is no reason why Daniel should quite honestly take any sacks in this game. They're going to be ahead, preserve himself, and he has the fifth quickest time to throw. So again, he, even if he is throwing the ball, he's throwing it so quickly before the defense is even getting to him. So I'm going to take under two and a half. That seems like a steal to me, especially on a team that averages one a game. So they're my three favorite sack props. <laughs> good, Corbin. Corbin, I, I try. You. You, you killed it, Corbin. <laughs> I, love you. All, I love all three of these. Uh, the Bengals, Browns, yeah, they're they're garbage. They give them sack. <laughs> I love it. The Giants over two and a half. That's a great call. And the Panthers have zero <laughs> pass <laughs> uh, Even the sacks they get are like BS quarterback sliding down behind the line sacks. So I think you killed it, buddy. Thank you. All right. Good job, guys. All right. That is going to do it for us. Don't forget, uh, uh, NFL uh, pack is up 4-1 and one the last couple weeks. So I'm um, looking forward to a really, really nice Sunday. And this pack will include uh, any plays we have in the Monday night game. So go ahead and take advantage of that. Over at wagertalk.com, wt.buzz slash AL. Good luck on your place, and we will see everyone later. Good luck. See you guys next time.